Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Young at Heart, session number 72. And how do you do? And how do you do? And how do you do? Again. I'm Father James DeLuzio of the Paulist Fathers here in New York City, ready to share a rhyme or two with you to keep us all young at heart. I pronounce my name in the Italian fashion this evening because yesterday I sang for you an Italian opera aria by Giacomo Puccini. And if I were living in Italy, my name would be Padre James. No, it would be Padre Giacomo di Luzio. Today, however, we're leaving the Italian mainland for that island known as England. And I have a variation or an inspiration on a more common nursery rhyme, Little Miss Muffet. This is called the extraordinary episode of Little Miss Muffet, contributed by Catherine, my dear friend, in the Minneapolis, Minnesota area. And, and, and I must keep up the English affectation. This poem needs some affectation. It has a bit of condescension about it. It's very, very cultured. And its rhyme, although it does have a great little bouncy kind of ribbon, a rhythm. Now, don't worry, this is not a physical exercise, Catherine, but all the same, um, it's fun. Based on, of course, the very common and well-known nursery rhyme, Little Miss Muffet, who sat on a tuffet, eating her curds and whey. And along came a spider, who sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. Well, this is expanding on the Miss Muffet experience. I've done a little investigation, and I found that in the early 17th century, there was a popular doctor, a scientist, Dr. Thomas Muffet, and he had a daughter named Patience. Dr. Thomas Muffet was an entomologist, and so inspired by her father's study, the young woman, Patience, as she grew up, also made a study of insects, and she published a book on the great variety of these creatures and their various habits. So therefore, we can assume that the original Little Miss Muffet was inspired by her life. This, however, I don't know where this one came from. Catherine, did you compose this? She did not include the author in her note, but it's a lot of fun. In order to really get into it, we have to assume an air of propriety, of high culture, a more dispassionate observation than a real involvement. There's not, well, there is a bit of compassion in the rhetoric here, and there is, of course, a moral, a lesson to be taught as we who look down on society as a rule like to promote the most proper way of acting and speech. Notice the wonderful vocabulary that is featured in today's poem. The embarrassing episode of Little Miss Muffet. Little Miss Muffet discovered a tuffet which never occurred to the rest of us. And as twas a June day and just about noonday, she wanted to eat like the best of us. Her diet was whey. And I hasten to say it is wholesome and people grow fat on it. The spot being lonely, the lady not only discovered the tuffet, but sat on it. A rivulet gabbled beside her and babbled as rivulets always are thought to do, and dragonflies sported around her cavorted as poets say dragonflies ought to do. When glancing aside for a moment, she cried, she spied a horrible sight that brought fear to her. A hideous spider was sitting beside her and most 
unavoidably near to her. Albeit unsightly, the creature politely said, Madam, I earnestly vow to you, I'm penitent that I did not bring my hat. I should otherwise certainly bow to you. Though anxious to please, he was so ill at ease that he lost all his sense of propriety and grew so inept that he clumsily stepped in her plate, which is barred by society. This error completed her terror. She shuddered and growing much paler, she not only left Tuffet, but dealt him a buffet, which doubled him up in a sailor knot. It should be explained that at this he was pained. He cried, I have vexed you, no doubt of it. Your fist like a truncheon, you're still in my luncheon, was all that she answered. Get out of it. And the moral is this, be it madam or miss, to whom you have something to say, you are only absurd when you get in the curd, but you're rude when you get in the way. Delightful. Uh, at least I hope that you have ascertained so. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Have a lovely afternoon and evening. As always, stay healthy and keep safe, and God bless. Bye, everyone.